please turn to page 146. Pages 146 through 149 will be all the pages you need in order to teach stage three of narrative writing. Let's go through all these pages so that we quickly can identify all the different parts. First of all, on page 146, we have the narrative chant. This chant will be what you use to introduce what you're going to teach the students at stage three. On page 147, you have your teacher at a glance steps that you would refer to when teaching the lesson so that it's on one page, easy to use. Turn to page 148 and 149. On page 148, at the top are the box descriptors of what is taught at stage three. So you'll see in content and organization, what are we teaching when it comes to our story opening, the events, our story closing. When we look at our sentences, what teaching points will we focus on at the sentence level? And then also when it comes to mechanics, what are your teaching points as well? So all that is identified and it does match your standard. So you have your descriptors and notice stage three is for first grade only. So kindergarten, you were first, you were stage one and two, stage three, now we're just moving on to first grade. Let's look also on this page what we have. You have the steps, the student-friendly chart that you can post as you go through each step. Notice behind me, I have that same exact chart so that you can kind of see what it looks like in the size, but you have the visual here, and the major thing that you wanna look at are the colors. The green is for the story opening. The yellow are for the actions, actions, actions in the story, and the blue is the story is done, the story closing. So that way you have the three parts of the story and visually the students can see those steps. Next to the steps is a finished organizer showing an organizer that a student made. When you're doing your whole group lessons, the teacher would have a big piece of butcher paper next to these steps, filling it in and students are, and the teacher are doing this together. Eventually, the students would be following these steps as partners and no longer are they doing this with the teacher. The teacher is only reminding them of the steps and scaffolding that part of the lesson. So you do many whole group lessons and you start releasing students. Do you release everyone to work in partners? No. Let's say you've done several stories and you've used the steps and you have some really high kids in your class that get these steps and they know how to use them. Then you're gonna put them in partners. Each one will have their own organizer and they'll follow the steps and together plan a story and then write it out. You will still go over and monitor what they're doing, but you're releasing responsibility for them to now use the steps to make their own story. What are you doing during this whole group lesson time while they're in partners? You're working with those medium and low students. Together, you and they are following the steps to write a story. And again, You'll keep repeating this process over and over and over again. You'll have many stories under your belt. And now the medium students, they start getting the steps. What do you do? You release them in partners. At this point, you may have your high students just independently, no longer in partners, write their own stories. So you could, during your writing block time, have some students who are writing independently their own stories, some children in partners following the steps to write their story, and you are still with a group of students, typically your lows at this point, who you are working with writing the same story because they still need to learn the steps. As you go down the road and they've written many stories, they go in partners, your mediums, they start writing their own stories on their own, and then eventually you have your lows work on their own as well. So this is how you differentiate instruction and slowly release responsibility so that all your students eventually are writing on their own. Now we have all the different parts of this page. We've talked a little bit about differentiate instruction and what it would look like. But the last thing I wanna show you before we get started with the steps, the chant and the steps and going through a practice lesson, let me show you your tools. If you saw the stage two writing lesson, then you already saw this toolkit. It's just a little plastic box that you can buy in any home goods store. And basically what it has is it has two little pockets here and it has a large section on the back side. Now let's go back to the First side, notice I have setting character. These are flip books that you can get in this manual. And you could have different pictures of animals and people in these different flip books. 
You also have flip books that are going to show the settings. So you could have your setting flip books, your where pictures, where you would have different places that your character could have this story. And then you also have your when, different times. Like for instance, this was during the summer or a sunny day. On the reverse side, you have the part of the story, which are the actions. And now the actions are going to be where a character can do, say, or think. So you will have three different cards that you can show the children where you can decide, is the character in this next action box going to do something, say something, or think something? So now you have your do, say, think. And what is that? That's basically the character is doing an action, saying something, or thinking something. So now we're going to add dialogue into our writing. You also have emotion cards to make the story more interesting. If you have students who are having difficulty coming up with the next action in their story, we can pull an emotion card, which will help them come up with a better idea. In your toolkit, you can also have your add fancy words, the adjectives. You can have your salt and pepper shaker with some beads inside so that when you go to add fancy words on the organizer, you can shake it to add a little fun to your lesson. And then you have your two cards to determine the kind of fancy words, the five senses, or we have emotions or the personality of the character that you want to use to describe the character. So these are your categories. These are our tools. Now let's go through, learn our chant, and then let's go ahead and follow through with the step-by-step -step lesson in order to teach your kids how to write at the stage three narrative writing. On page 146, is our chant, a visual of this. You could put this on your document viewer so you can project it up to the children when you're teaching it. You could have it just on a chart that's posted on the wall. It really is up to you. So I would introduce stage three writing by teaching this chant. All the students are at their desk. They have their folded piece of legal size paper with the folded part on the top. And now I'm telling them we're gonna learn stage three writing. So boys and girls, we are now going to learn. We're going up a notch in our writing where we're going to learn more and become even more adult-like in our writing. We're going to learn stage three narrative writing. Put your hand up to your face and go, ooh, ooh, I know. Well, let me teach you what all the parts of stage three narrative writing have. First of all, put your hands together and everyone go story opening. Ready? Story opening. Well, wait a minute. We already learned a story opening, but now we're going to have a secret formula. We're gonna learn a secret formula so that we can make an even better story opening. And that is SC arrow. So what's my secret formula? SC arrow. Let's go back and let's now say our chant for the beginning of our story. Ready? Story opening, SC arrow. Or story opening, secret formula, SC arrow. Let's learn our narrative writing chant. Hands together, story opening, SC arrow. That's our secret formula. We're gonna learn a secret formula in order to write a really good story opening. Yeah. All right, let's go again. Story opening, SC arrow. Then actions, 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 until the story's done. Are we learning that's new in this stage? The story opening, SC arrow. We're also now going to have transitions, absolutely have transitions at stage three. Now we don't have to have them for each action, but we will be pushing transitions. Remember in stage two, that was optional. Sometimes if students are ready, you could add some, but in stage three, we want transitions. You don't need to have transitions for every sentence though but we want to start pushing that students are using transitions. Let's say our, our chant. Story opening, SC arrow, then actions, 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 till the story's done. So the new teaching point, we're learning a little more, we're adding more rigor to our writing. At this stage three, we're building on stage two. What are we adding? We're adding SC arrow, a secret formula, to start our story opening. So our opening sentence is more sophisticated. We're going to have our actions, 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 where we will definitely have transitions now. And then the story's done. So basically what we're going to do is add the secret formula and then transitions are a must. Now we are going to walk through the steps. What I'm going to do is keep your teacher steps on page 147 and then make sure that you grab a blank piece of paper 
so you can walk through the steps with me so that you can learn how to plan a story using these steps. On page 147, we have the teacher at a glance steps that we're going to follow. Remember, you would have your posted chart, just like the one behind me, up on the wall for students to follow. This is just a handy dandy chart for you to follow along all on one page. On a blank piece of paper, always blank paper, the students are going to be making their organizer as they go through this process. It's a very similar organizer. Still the legal size paper, students are going to start at the top and go all the way to the bottom. They're going to keep making boxes even on the back if they need to continue with the story. Let's get started. So we say to the students, let's say our chant one more time. Story opening, SC arrow, then actions, actions, actions till the story's done. Now let's look at our chart. At the top of the chart, it's green. The green part is for the story opening. Let's look at the yellow part of the chart. Those are for the actions, and the blue is for the story closing. Now we're going to go up to our story opening. So teachers, your steps are right here that you can follow or just use the chart. So we say to the kids, story opening, step one, get organized. Okay, I need to get organized. So what I need to do is I need to write my secret formula. So we'll go to the top of our page and we will write S, C, arrow. Now when students are doing this, to save you time, you want them to put their finger on the top of their paper where they're going to write the S. Make sure they have their finger in the right place, then tell them to write the S. Finger in the middle for the C and the arrow. So that way they have an idea visually, you can see that they know where they're supposed to write it and that they make a tiny one. So now we have our SC arrow. All right, boys and girls, say, what does that mean? That's our secret formula. What does it mean? Well, the S is for setting. What is the S for? Setting. Look at your wrist like you're looking at a watch. Setting tells us time and place, or when and where. So what does setting tell us? Time and place, or when and where. C is for character. Who's in our story? A person, an animal, or I am. So that way you can write an imaginative narrative, a personal narrative with these same exact steps. So now we have who's in our story, a person, an animal, or I am. And then the arrow is action. What is the character doing? 